To have a good understanding of Dynamics 365, it's important to consider entities as the basic building blocks of the system. Entities are tables that hold records, for example, accounts, contacts, and opportunities. And then entities have attributes, or so sort of fields on the forms that we'll be filling out in a few minutes that helps us define data and records and keep things sort of organized and pertinent to the entities like accounts, contacts, and opportunities. So items like first and last name, dollar values, uh, date values, all of these things sort of roll up into entities and form the basic building blocks of relationships and reporting that we can draw on from Dynamics 365. Let's begin with accounts, for example. Accounts are organizations with which you have a relationship, uh, potentially buying, potentially selling, uh, all sorts of relationships that exist between your organization and another. These can be customers and prospects, but they can also be vendors and business partners, uh, literally any organization, group of contacts that you want to store information on could be considered an account. Uh, account information is also a critical part of the sales process, so I do want to cover on spending some time to fill out this information correctly. Well, let's flip over to Dynamics 365 and I will explain more. Here we are in the Dynamics 365 web interface. Uh, accounts are accessed by clicking on this icon. It looks like a file folder with some papers in it. And I've set my default view here as my active accounts. Uh, I don't have any just for the purpose of this demonstration as I want to show you uh, what things look like as we add new accounts. So up on the top action bar here, or the ribbon, let's select the new button to create a new account record. And here we're brought to this form or this ability for us to add some attributes to the account entity. Uh, let's begin by filling up some of this information. And you can see the variety of fields that we have available to us out of the box, sort of as a generic Dynamics 365 implementation. We have items like account name, phone and fax numbers, websites, parent accounts. So if you do have one organization that owns another or two that are related and you want to link them in a parent-child relationship, uh, that is available. Ticker symbol, relationship type, product price list. We're going to focus on that in uh, webinars later on this summer. Uh, we have address and the ability to have multiple street address lines, city, province, zip postal code, country, region, everything you would expect from the basics for adding a new account. Now I'm going to go up here and click save and close and we should be returned to the previous screen and we can see all of our active accounts which in the case of this demonstration will just be the data place account. Now I've rather quickly added the data place account, so let's go back into this account and see what else that we can add here for relevant information. Uh, you'll see all of these tab sort of areas along this screen, summary, prediction insights, general partner program, details, field service, scheduling, and so on. Uh, because this is an out-of-the-box demo for Dynamics 365, there's a ton of features that are turned on and a ton of entities that haven't been turned off for relevance. Uh, a good partner, for example, a profit business group, can help you um, sort of turn things that you may not need, like prediction insights or LinkedIn company profiles. We can help you turn that off so it doesn't clutter up your, uh, your user interface. Let's go into general, for example. There's other information here that you can fill out opportunity revenue, partner ranking, um, there's the ability to have a geo codes so if you're going to use mapping, uh, Bing Maps for example, uh, to show all of your client locations, that's something you'd want to have filled out. Uh, opportunity count, partner capacity, win rate, loss rate, some very very interesting details here that'll get filled out as you uh, work with this account in your system or maybe something that you want to add now. Details is another interesting area. Um, you can add industry, SIC code, ownership information. Again, anything that's going to help you refine and define this account to sell to them better, shipping method, freight terms, um, really, really sort of detailed descriptions or detailed information would sit here in the account record. 
And another neat thing too is we can customize this. So if there's something that you would like to see here that you don't, uh, again, can be added to, to this entity for you to store that information. Another interesting section here is the ellipse button. If you click on, uh, and that will pull up any related activities, contacts, uh, entitlements, quotes, etc. Uh, anything in the system that relates to the data place account, you'd be able to surface from here. But again, we, because we just added this account and we're just using it as a sample, there's not going to be any really re relevant related information. And being a salesperson at heart too, this is really relevant for all of the sellers out there. Uh, as you do work with your accounts and as you do collect information on accounts, uh, I'm a firm believer that it's important to store that type of information in a trusted system like your CRM, uh, Dynamics 365 in this example. Um, so you do have the ability to add as much information as you are collecting about your account into the account records here in Dynamics 365. Let's switch gears now and focus on contacts in Dynamics 365. In the same way accounts for organizations with which you have relationships, contacts are individual people with which you have relationships. Now contacts can be assigned to accounts or they may just be individuals that you want to uh, track communication with so you have them inputted as a contact in CRM. Now there is a connection between accounts and contacts and that exists in a one-to-many fashion so you can have one account with many contacts. And so my example here, you may have the information for CEO, CFO, and potentially a, a third person, maybe your buyer. Now contacts can be synced between Dynamics 365 and your Outlook address book. So if you're sending a lot of email to your contacts, that's really handy. And again, being a, a salesperson at heart, tracking information, tracking communication, and sort of collaboration along the way between what you're talking to your contacts should be stored and utilized later. And the CRM is obviously the best place to store that type of information. Here we are again in the Dynamics 365 web interface. I've opened my active contacts here. Uh, you do reach this screen by clicking the little silhouette icon here, uh, quite a familiar icon for people and contacts. You'll see that my contacts list is empty. Again, this is just my demo uh, tenant of Dynamics 365, so I don't have a lot of data populated here. Let's go ahead and add a new contact though. Up on the ribbon or the action bar here, we'll click on the new icon, and we'll see all the fields available to us for a contact record. Out of the box, Dynamics 365 has the relevant fields that you would expect for tracking contact information. And these are items like first name, last name, job title, company name, email, business phone, mobile phone, fax, etc. there, all of the address information. And now while this is quite limited and there are no custom fields here, if you did want to track, for example, uh, birthday or favorite hockey team or uh, scheduling information, um, that can be added as custom fields in the contact record. So let's go ahead and fill out a new contact and fill out this form with some information, see how we can work with it. And here, for example, we're going to link Garth Algar to the data place account, which we set up in the uh, few minutes ago. And we'll fill out as much information as we have available on, uh, in this example, Garth. I'm going to save that so we don't lose any information. And I just wanted to discuss two quick uh, fields here available to us on the contact screen. Uh, that is the timeline area, which is in the middle of the screen. Now, uh, because this is a demo and because we haven't really worked with Garth uh, that much yet, we haven't sent him any emails or quotes, we haven't made any phone calls or really done any work with him, uh, his timeline is going to appear blank. But as we do those activities and the system sort of propagates with information, um, the timeline becomes a feed or sort of a historical feed of every interaction that you've had with this contact. Uh, so here today we can see that we created it, uh, but that's really the only en entry we have into the timeline. On the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the relationship assistant. 
Uh, I plan to cover this in a future webinar exclusively. Uh, the Relationship Assistant is a really powerful tool if you have deadlines or you want to set up follow-up frequency. The Relationship Assistant is a great place to see sort of visually tasks that you have upcoming in this case that relate to Garth Algar, our contact. Because we're keeping it basic today, I don't want to get into the weeds on all of the functionality within the contact record. But up here on the ribbon, there are a few different actions that you can take. You can create a, another new contact record. We could deactivate Garth. Perhaps he's moved on or we don't deal with him anymore. Uh, deactivating the contact will place it in a read-only state. We might want to connect Garth to another account or another opportunity. We may want to add Garth to our uh, email marketing list, for example. We may want to assign Garth to one of our colleagues on the sales team, or we may want to delete this record completely. Uh, all of those options are available here on this blue ribbon at the top. And again, all of these actions are customizable. So if you do have different workflows within your sales process, within your sales organization, we can tweak these as needed. Now, when we were setting up Garth, we assigned him to the data place account that we created. Uh, let's just flip back over to the account view here for data place and clicking the ellipse, we can pull up related contacts. We'll see that Garth has been added as a contact to the data place account. Perfect, that's exactly what we wanted to happen. Last but not least, let's spend a few minutes talking about opportunities in Dynamics 365. If you remember our last Dynamics 365 webinar, that was about four weeks ago, we discussed leads and how leads represent temporary records in Dynamics 365. Now, if we qualify a lead, it'll actually take the information that we've inputted for the contact person and the potential new account and flip those from the lead status into a contact record, an account record, and an opportunity. And we can kind of go into each of those entities and refining the information as we work with that contact account and um, work on the opportunity as part of our sales cycle. So opportunities are potentials for sale, and it's really, really important to track opportunities as that's most helpful for forecasting and definitely for making business decisions. Here in the Dynamics 365 web interface, I've actually opened leads first. I want to show you how the relationship works between leads and qualifying these leads. So here's a sample lead I've entered for Wayne Campbell. It's a webinar lead and it's new. Let's go ahead and qualify that lead. So we're just going to select this record and click the Qualify button. And we'll let this process. And let's take a look behind the scenes what the system has done for us. Let's go back over to our Accounts view. Now we can see that the Wayne Campbell lead has actually turned into an active account for Big Company. Now let's go look at Contacts really quickly. And here we can see that Wayne Campbell was not a contact actively before, and now he is. Again, we've qualified that lead. And lastly, let's go over to Opportunities. Refreshing this screen will deliver us the Wayne Campbell lead uh, that has now turned into an opportunity. So when we created the webinar lead, we didn't have a lot of information on the opportunity uh, in this example. Let's go ahead and open this opportunity record and you'll see all the fields that are available to us. We have contact and account, which are obviously going to be derived from the lead information. But we have a purchasing time frame. This may be immediate this quarter, next quarter, this year, or unknown. Uh, we have the ability to set a currency, a budget amount, maybe after a call or two with this particular client, we've determined that he does have $125,000 available for this project. project. And um, here we're able, we're able to set if the purchase is being made by an individual or a committee. Uh, really relevant information for us as sellers that help us sort of refine our sales process, whichever uh, sales method or model that we happen to use. Anything can be stored here. And again, I sound like a broken record, but this can be customized and custom fields can be added to this entity to help you as sellers uh, sort of remember all of the important information. Up at the top here in the opportunity record as well, we have an estimated close date and an estimated revenue. Uh, again, this will be most helpful for reporting on pipeline and financial forecasting in your business. 
Now, opportunities don't necessarily need to come from qualified leads. You can add new opportunities uh, without a lead, for example. Uh, let's click on the New button here in the ribbon. That'll open the New Opportunity window, and we're able to add as much information as we had uh, available to us in any of these tabs here in the Opportunity Record. Right on, we're just about done today's webinar. And just to recap everything that we've covered today, Understanding key entities, I believe, is very important for successful salespeople. Uh, we discussed entities and how these are tables that hold records. And we have attributes or fields that we can fill out about each entity. Accounts are organizations with which you have a relationship. Contacts are people or individuals with which you have a relationship. Opportunities can be created after leads are, are qualified, or you can create opportunities on their own. And that sort of kicks off the sales process So in the next few phases of sales. We're actually going to cover this in more detail and talk about customizing the sales process in future webinars. Be sure to stay tuned for those. Dynamics 365 for sales helps track information, uh, which is most relevant for forecasting and decision making. And again, the more information you put into your CRM, the more you'll be able to do with it. The information will be richer and you can make better and more timely decisions based on that.